Hi Providence students, this is Mrs. McDaniel and I have a video today about establishing good practice habits. So grab a pencil and a piece of paper and take lots of notes. We're going to be talking about a good quality practice space, practice plan, practice tools, and evaluation and performance. Let's jump right into it. First up, we're talking about our practice space. So that means the room, the area of the house that you're gonna be spending most of your time practicing in. My practice space is outside of my house in my backyard and it has plenty of room for all of my materials. So my chair, my stand, my instruments, my books. When you practice in a small space, you're more likely to not have everything immediately there so you have to get up, leave, go get that thing, come back, break focus, start over, etc. So a good practice space has plenty of room for all of your things. A good practice space is also distraction free. It means no little brother and sister running around asking you stuff, dogs barking, whatever else could be TV. You know what I mean? Distraction free. A good practice space also has all of your materials within arm's reach. Like I said earlier, getting up and going to get your book out of your backpack after you've sat down to practice, or getting up and having to go get your slide oil from the other room and bringing it back and greasing up your slide. All of your things need to be in your space when you sit down to practice. Plenty of space, distraction free, and practice materials and tools available are all great attributes for a constructive practice space. Next up, we're talking about practice plan. When I write out my practice plan, I include everything that I'm going to be doing that practice. For example, I write warm up and the specific things I'm going to be doing to warm up. I write the scales that I'm going to be practicing. I write the music that I'm going to be practicing and always, always a goal. My practice plan for today included warming up, concert B flat major, G minor scales, and duets from the red book, the blue book, and the green book so that I could record videos for you guys. My goal for this practice was to master all the videos. It's as simple as that. Sometimes it really helps to just have a list very similar to this just in front of you when you sit down to practice so that you don't wonder halfway through, oh, should I be practicing this? What should I do? You know what you have to do because it's in your practice plan. Next thing we're talking about are essential practice tools. To me, Essential practice tools include a tuner, a metronome, a pencil with an eraser, and your maintenance materials. What I mean by maintenance materials is slide grease, valve oil, a mouthpiece brush, etc. All at your fingertips. When you use tools like a tuner and a metronome, you're able to hear and see some mistakes as you're playing. You have a tuner telling you whether or not you're in tune and a metronome helping you play in time. As always, and I'm a stickler for this, we have a pencil with an eraser, a pencil with an eraser because we do not write in our music with pen. As many times as people have asked, no erasable pen, pencil with an eraser. Finally, we will be talking about evaluation and performance. The easiest way to evaluate yourself as you practice is to record yourself, much like I'm doing on my phone right now. Take a phone or a computer or a tablet and video record or audio record yourself practicing something, whether it be a scale, a piece of music, an etude, something from your parent concert selection, whatever record yourself playing it and listen to it. Think about two things you liked about what you played and two things that could use some improvement. Those two things that could use improvement 
Think about how you would improve those things. Performance. This is very important. Right now, we don't have any more performances as a band this year. What we need to do and what is good practice to do is to perform for your friends and family. I know a lot of us are on video calls these days with friends and family. It would be a really good test of your practice to perform for your friends and family on those video calls or perform what I like to call living room concerts. So you set up your stand in your living room, you gather your family, and you play for them. You show them what you've been practicing. Both evaluating and performing are the ultimate tests of the quality of your practice. And now to review. Today we talked about establishing good quality practice habits. The number one thing is our practice space. Number two is our practice plan. Number three are our essential practice tools. And number four is evaluation and performance. I'm looking forward to hearing all your hard work. Thanks and see you next week.